Wow, what a diversity of Southern Counties Baptist welcome. My name is Kang San Tan. On, BM, on behalf of BMS World Mission, I join the welcome and I'm reading Psalm 100 and will lead us in prayer. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Father, we come before you as a Baptist family, united in our worship, in this invitation to bring joyful songs. Most of all, Lord, to acknowledge that you are our God. We are one people, united in one mission, to bring not only our songs of praise and worship, but to be witnesses and a missional people in our locality. Be with us these days, visit us, comfort us in our challenges and sorrows, but turn our eyes upon our Lord Jesus as we worship you, not only with our lips, but with our lives. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen. This is really, sometimes when you hear AGM, you think, oh, but don't feel, uh, feel yay, particularly when I've got the clicker for the slides, because this is a, a real opportunity for us to come together and to celebrate and give thanks to God for the life of our union and all that God is doing in and through amongst us. So it really is an amazing time for us, again, as I said, to celebrate and enjoy and to be inspired and to be encouraged in what we're doing. Later on, we're going to be honouring our president, Jeff Colmer, and welcoming our president, Hayley Young. Again, another very significant part of our life together. So we're really looking forward to that happening a bit later. But now, I am joined by the wonderful Christina Carter, who is one of our trustees. She's representing the Bugby Trustee Board. Yes, bring it up for Christina. She's representing the trustee board as the acting moderator, Andrew Cowley, is unable to be with us. And I'm also delighted to be joined here by John Levick, our honorary treasurer. John. So I'm going to hand over to Christina now for the formal bit of what we're doing, and I shall see you shortly. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our AGM, as Lynn said. Let's just begin with a word of prayer. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we commit this formal part of our assembly to you as we consider the essential business of our union. Come amongst us by the power of your Holy Spirit as we seek your mind and discern together the resolutions before us and hear our treasurer's report. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The first two resolutions relate to a reappointing our acting moderator of the trustee board and our treasurer, John. John's going to depart the stage. Before I invite you to affirm the appointments of our acting moderator of the trustee board and treasurer of the union, by way of reminder, voting is by those delegates present in the room, appointed to exercise a vote on behalf of the BUGB member church or organisation who are, or, or, sorry, or who are ministerial members of the assembly. Those of you who are joining us online, 
are very welcome to express your support for Andrew and John in the live stream chat, but your votes will not be formally counted. So, I think there should be a slide. I think I have to... Oh. Yeah. Right, those of you who are... Yes, sorry. So, first, I invite you to cast your vote with regard to John Levick serving as our treasurer for the further year. Please, could you vote? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? No, good, thank you very much. The result is carried. John, you may come back in. John, we welcome you back. You are, you are still our treasurer for another year. Secondly, I invite you to cast your vote to reappoint Andrew Cowley as acting moderator of the trustee board until the 12th of October, 2022, or until a new moderator is appointed, whichever is the sooner. So as you see, the resolution is on screen. Those in favor? Thank you. Those against? Thank you. And any abstentions? No, nope. the vote is carried. Thank you. There's a link on the screen here. Can I draw your attention to the fact that the trustee board are currently seeking a moderator of the board, a treasurer to succeed John in a year, and a trustee with experience in safeguarding? to join the board. Opportunities are shared through the job section of the Baptist Together website in the Baptist Times and also via social media. We are particularly keen to maintain and develop the diversity and the skill set of our board. If you're interested in any one of these roles or know someone who would be good to serve in this way, please speak to me, Lynn or John or get in touch using the link on the screen. John Levick, is now gonna, our treasurer, is now going to come and present an overview of financial resources as a Baptist family. Thank you, John. Good morning. And thank you for your support in uh, reappointing me as treasurer for an additional year. 2021 has continued from 2020 as a challenging year, but as the year progressed, there was a gradual return to more normal conditions. Bugby, which I will refer to as the union, had a surplus of 112,000 for the year before investment gains and revaluations in its general funds. The overall total of the home mission appeal continues to fall with a reduction of 1.73% for the year. This was also just 95% of the amount requested. We continue to see almost double the amount come in in December compared with other months in which makes it difficult to forecast the outcome for the year end. During the year, we moved to a total return for investments which means we gain a more stable income flow, but more volatility in the capital values. Subscriptions provide a stable income flow. Legacies are a very un unpredictable, and last year I reported that they hit a low in 2020, but indicated that 2021 will be better as we had already received notification of some significant legacies. The situation turned out to be even better than hoped, with a total of 1.15 million against 185,000 in 2020. It is only the high level of legacies which enabled the union to break even during the year. To indicate that this was a one-off, 
the legacies so far in 2022 are lower than the same point in 2020, which was a low year. I remind you that we offer a free will writing service and ask that you consider your wills. <laughs> this is quite important that you, you consider this, particularly as, the, uh, as we come through COVID. Uh, <laughs> but you, but you should, but you can also consider leaving a gift to the union. Remember that giving to charity reduces your overall income ta inheritance tax rate. At this point, I rem remind you that the Home Mission Appeal, plus legacies, plus subscriptions, plus investment income, plus the surplus from the Baptist Union Corporation, forms the Home Mission Fund, which is shared with the associations. Most of the expenditure is the allocation to associations. These, move, these allocations move in line with income in the Home Mission Fund. Other expenditure has been controlled and opportunities for savings are always being sought. Having had to claw back funding to associations in 2020 because income fell short of target, the large legacies in 2021 allowed this to be reversed, which accounts for the allocation to associations increasing from 2.944 million to 3.581 million. The expenditure on the specialist teams increased by 92,000. Until now, I have spoken about the unrestricted general funds of the union. The union also has designated funds where we have decided to set aside funds for specific purposes. The most significant designated fund is the pension reserve. This holds a 20 million pounds loan from the retired Baptist ministers housing organization, which was used to fund the family solution to the pension deficit. We currently put the union share of receipts from closed churches into this fund, along with 550,000 provided by the Baptist Union Corporation. The Baptist House Reserve and Fixed Asset Reserve hold property and other assets that support the union's work. The Pastoral Fund provides grants. A group is looking at how we use ultimate trust monies from closed churches in future as the need for the pension reserve decreases. Most of the designated expenditure relates to pensions, but a significant other item of expenditure is on grants from the benevolent funds. Restricted funds, within the union there has been work to reduce the restricted funds by ensuring that the, these funds are used first when there is expenditure which meets the restrictions, and we have now reduced these funds to only £13,000. The union's balance sheet shows a net increase of 2.25 million in unrestricted funds. Key reasons for the increase are higher investment values, disposal of properties and releasing the balance of the COVID support fund no longer required. These are one-off increases and indeed for 2022, we are seeing a fall in the value of our investments reflecting the Ukraine situation and increased energy prices. The consolidated accounts combine the union's accounts with those from the Baptist Union Corporation, the income and expenditure of which is unrestricted, the 50% share of income and costs from Baptist House, and the retired Baptist Minister's Housing Organization. Uh, all of RBMHO's income being treated as restricted funds. BUC loans totaled 41.7 million, including loans to RBMHO. BUC deposits from churches totaled 56.5 million at the end of the year, up from 54.7 million at the end of 2020. 
These deposits from churches and associations show that some churches have continued to fare well during the lockdowns and have not had to draw on their resources. Over the last two years, we've provided 49 grants to 26 churches, totaling £216,000, where the churches had ran out of funds during the COVID lockdowns. In addition, 32, 32 repayment holidays and 27 reduced payments on BUC loans, totaling at 331,000 worth of repayments. And an interest-free period was given to 20 churches with building projects underway, resulting in 52,000 pounds of interest foregone. 27 pastoral grants were agreed, totaling 55,000 pounds and a grant of 50,000 was also provided to the European Baptist Federation in response to a request for support. Last year, I was pleased to report that the pension fund, which had been a major concern over the past decade, is no longer such a concern. Good progress had been made in improving the funding position. This year, I am able to report further progress, and we are approaching the point whereby we can buy out the defined benefit scheme, cease deficit contributions, and remove all risk from churches, whilst ensuring that our pension commitments are honored. There is still a... There is still a lot of work to do before we can reach buyout, but we are expecting that deficit contributions can cease well ahead of the current date of June 2026. One major piece of work is to put in place suitable adjustments where an, adjust in an insurance company cannot exactly match the current scheme benefits. Last year, I mentioned finance being needed to support students through their ministerial formation. Progress has been made and a pilot scheme has been launched for students starting this autumn. We have started a finance review to look at how we allocate our financial resources. This is a complex piece of work with Tricordant, a Christian consultancy, helping us. I am hoping that one of the outcomes will be a clearer view of the way we allocate home mission monies, which will enable us to communicate better how the funds are used. The bringing of the defined benefit fund into balance will provide an opportunity as around 4.5 million per annum that Baptist organizations are currently paying in deficit contributions we no longer need to go into the pension fund. This will be welcome relief at a time when the finances of all our member organizations are under pressure and churches are seeing increased energy bills. However, I request that churches look to allocate a substantial proportion of the savings on deficit contributions when they occur to increase giving to home mission. In all of this, I want to give thanks to Richard Wilson and his team who manage all of these financial areas, and also to the treasurers and finance teams in our associations and colleges and churches. They do a lot of unseen but important work for the kingdom. I I want to finish by going back to the home mission appeal figures. We continue to see a small but steady decline in giving year on year, which puts pressures on our finances. I have been looking at the giving over recent years, and until 2019, whilst giving to the home mission appeal was declining, there was a small increase in giving per member, reflecting the fall in membership across Baptist Together. 
This turned into a fall in amounts per member in 2020 and 2021, no doubt reflecting the challenges of COVID, the lockdowns, and churches not holding services in person. Home mission is key to our ability to finance all we do in associations and the specialist teams, and in giving grants to churches and for mission projects. With inflation now running much higher than for many years, costs will go up, adding more pressures to the finances if the amount raised by the Home Mission Appeal doesn't increase in line with inflation. I don't want to finish on a negative note, as the Lord provided for us unexpectedly in 2021 by the large legacies. We can give thanks to the Lord for his continued provision. I close with a passage from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. It talks about gifts given to Christians, but I want it read in the context of it being monetary gifts. Each of you should use whatever gift, whatever finance, you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you, whatever you wherever you are serving. And may you be wise stewards of the financial resources you have been given. Thank you, John, for that presentation and for all that you and other treasurers do within our family to help us share our resources for the sake of the kingdom. I want to draw your attention to the annual report. It gives you an excellent overview of um, the work of the union. Uh, it gives you information about the specialist teams, how, how we're structured. It gives you information about the regional teams. It's a great whistle-stop tour. Uh, so I encourage you to pick one up from the information desk. I want to finish with a slide. There's a particular favourite of mine. Um, and we're going to read, I'm going to read it. Um, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church, in Baptist together, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That brings us to the end of our formal part of our AGM. And so now I'm going to hand back to Lynn Green, our General Secretary. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. And uh, I think it would be really good to just express our appreciation, not only for the Bugby Trustee Board, but for the many uh, friends across Baptist Together who serve as trustees in our associations, our colleges, uh, and in our churches indeed. So let's express our thanks for our trustees. <laughs> Now, Baptist Together is a beautiful movement. It's a beautiful movement of churches, associations, and colleges who are passionate about being part of the mission of God. That's who we are. And I want to just help us celebrate that now as we watch this video.
What does it mean to belong to Baptists together? We are each a brushstroke made by our Lord's hand, each one playing a valuable and unique part in Baptist Together. Each Baptist adding to God's canvas in beautiful ways. Our churches are full of energy, colour and vibrancy. Our regional associations, colleges and specialist teams help our churches to paint God's picture. God works his canvas. Adding layers of his love to tell his story throughout the Baptist family. As Baptists together, we commit ourselves to being a movement led by the Spirit of God. Celebrating diversity, we will value, trust and respect one another in Christ. So what does it mean to belong to Baptists together? It means we're part of God's bigger picture as he paints his kingdom. And it's particularly precious and wonderful that we're able to meet here together in person and online this year in assembly. It's certainly been a tough few years, hasn't it? And we've faced many challenges. We've faced much suffering and much loss. And yet in the midst of it, we have seen the Lord at work in our churches and our communities. And I don't mean that in a triumphalistic way, because I know the pain, I know the, the, the weakness of the times that we have shared and the struggle. But even through that, we can see glimpses of God at work. And I have seen across the movement again and again where one is low, another is able to lift up. And then when they are low, another comes alongside. And it's a beautiful thing. And despite this demanding season of continual change, it has been so incredibly encouraging to see Baptists together at work, to see God at work in and through us. And I have seen lots of prayer, lots of adaptability, tremendous innovation and creativity. And that's the beauty of the Baptist movement. We're a grassroots movement following Jesus, engaged in our communities and willing to embrace the new opportunities that each challenge brings. And so now as we come together, it's a really good opportunity just to stop and to give thanks for God's faithful presence, for his sustaining and for the ways that he has been at work amongst us. And we praise the Lord and we give thanks to him that people have found faith and hope in Jesus. And this picture here represents the baptisms that have happened that speak of new life in Christ and of the many uh, the faithful faith sharing projects that have been going on, like Why Follow Jesus 365. Oh, now it's not working. There we go. We also praise the Lord for renewed commitment to prayer. Prayer across our movement. I have been so encouraged in conversations with people. I hear about, yes, we're gathering in prayer. Yes, we're doing this. We, we've gathered in our cluster, in our association, in lots of different ways. We've been gathering with the prayer broadcast. And I'll tell you something that really touched my heart recently. Um, and that's been the Prayer for Ukraine organised by the EBF. We thought we don't need to organise our own prayer meeting, we can join with theirs and partner together. 
And I tell you, I suddenly had one of those kind of incredible moments as a leader when I was online and I saw how many British Baptists there were on that call. And for me, that was very significant because it showed our heart, friends, our heart for prayer, our dependence on prayer. And we gathered to pray and that was really, really special. We thank God for a renewed commitment to prayer and all that that means. We also want to praise God, I think, for all the ways that God's love has been demonstrated in practical ways. And again, here's just a few pictures. You know, there are food banks, community fridges, there's been godly play and other children's activities going on, uh, people connecting with their communities, there's cafes and art workshops, there's well-being spaces. There is just a vast amount of wonderful uh, different expressions across our church of loving our community. And some of them are kind of big and glossy, but actually lots of them are small and just engaged in their communities. And that is such a wonderful, brilliant thing. And we thank God for all the life and all the things that are going on in and through our churches. And connected with that, we want to praise the Lord for all the ways that we've been able to serve and bless our communities in so many different ways. And again, I've just picked a few things just to represent what that is across our movement. But from national initiatives like the appointment of the incredible Sharon Sheck and the Hong Kong Project, that is amazing how we're able to serve friends who are coming to our country and minister to them and help them in practical ways. Yes, we just want to thank God for that initiative that we were able to get, see what God was doing and get part of it. And Sharon is now being really effective in supporting our churches to be Hong Kong ready and supporting those who are coming. And, and faith is being shared and we are serving and loving people and it's amazing. But that's kind of maybe a big thing we kind of pulled together on. But actually there are small scale projects and you can see there the Wren Bakery. And that's just one project aiming at empowering individuals and changing lives and prospects through that initiative. And again, it's not just one, is it? I'm sure you can um, name many others. It's incredible, these things that are happening across our movement. Prayer spaces in schools. How many of our young people up and down the country are being touched by prayer spaces and other initiatives in our schools because of the ministry of Baptist Together and the ways we're able to do things? And when I share these things, it just strikes me that, again, as I said earlier, this is just a snapshot of all the amazing, vibrant life of our churches. Baptist churches are making a difference, and I want to celebrate that, and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone for all the ways that you are worshipping and following Jesus and joining in with the mission of God in your own communities. It's all of us. We are the union, and that's what we want to celebrate, and yeah, just kind of get excited. Can we, can we get excited now? Are we going to celebrate that? Yes. It is amazing. And it's one of the incredible privileges of my role to see a lot of that amazingness. And I just, I'm often bursting with it. I just want to say, wow, it's so amazing. There's so many amazing people and projects and it's just wonderful. So yeah, let's just celebrate the life of Baptist Together because it is a precious and beautiful thing. But what about the future? It's certainly true that alongside all there is to celebrate, of which there is much to celebrate, we also face some big challenges, and John's already alluded to some of those, hasn't he? There are three key challenges that I want to share today, and the first one is this. We face the challenge of the unknown. I'm sure you've experienced this already in your own life and in your own churches, but the ongoing uncertainty of the pandemic and also of global instability means that this is going to continue to impact our churches, our movement, our leaders in all sorts of different ways. And so I hear about the weariness of leaders. I, I experience it myself. It's been tough. We hear about the lack of volunteers, about our congregations and how people are engaging. We hear about a squeeze of finances. And there are going to be many more challenges like these uh, as we look to the future. We are not out of the woods yet by a long chalk, and these things are going to challenge us. We are going into the unknown. But what I want to say to you today 
is that what is really important when we're in this time of ongoing uncertainty is that we need to maintain our vision of who God is. And actually, just saying this, I'm just looking for Jim, this is why worship is so important. Our worship leaders, our own devotion time, to see who God is and remind ourselves who God is and to deepen our trust in him. That is what is gonna sustain us through this challenge of the unknown. My next challenge, I think, for us is the mission challenge. What does church look like now? And again, I know many of us are reflecting on this question. Whilst the good news of Jesus is still powerful and relevant today, the changing context of our worship and mission has accelerated incredibly during the pandemic. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's been like we've been catapulted forward like a decade in terms of change and the impact. And again, what I believe we need to be asking ourselves now to face this challenge is to continue to prayerfully ask ourselves the question, what is God's call to us now? What is God's call to us now? What's been in the past and what's worked in the past has been amazing and wonderful and we thank God for all the ways that he's been in and through that. But what's God's call to us now? Where has he put us? How do we serve the communities that we're part of? What does it mean to be church in these days? This is the question we've got to be asking ourselves. Because remember that our God is a God who is doing a new thing. And so as he shows us his heart and his purposes for us now, I believe that we need to find the creativity, the courage and the faith to embrace adventure and to do find new ways of being in the season ahead and have the courage to step into that and not keep harking back to the past, but keep looking to the future, trusting who God is and trusting that as we ask the question, what's your call to us now, that God will lead us and guide us and will sustain us and be with us. My final challenge is the relational challenge how we hold those areas where we profoundly differ as we seek to be faithful to Christ and how we remain true to who we are as a movement of churches who are discerning the mind of Christ through scripture, recognizing that there are times when we come to different conclusions. What I believe is key for us as a movement with this challenge is that we need to give close attention this is so important, friends, not just to what we're disagreeing about, but the way that we disagree, the way that we do it. Thank you. And that's partly what this assembly is about. It's about genuinely listening. Please hear me. I am not asking you to listen to someone else with an agenda for you to change your mind. I am asking you to deeply listen to that person to hear their heart, to understand why they come to that thing. Because this is so important. And I think as we listen, deeply listen to each other in our discernment, and we hold the reality of where we're at, and sometimes the pain of that, I experience the pain of that, I'm sure we all do, somehow we will find a way forward with God. God is love, and love must remain at the centre. Thank you. <laughs> Scripture tells us that without love we are nothing. We need to disagree well in love and to demonstrate and to be a prophetic symbol in our world that we can disagree well. And this assembly, as I said, is part of what we're doing, part of us growing in this. And as we said earlier, we are a hive of interdependent churches. And so I want to encourage you, use the Slido app right on the boards, help us to identify and shape the conversations that we need to be having, but listen well and with Christ-likeness across our movement and take the opportunities to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, 
There are many times when I think to myself, fruit of the spirit, for me, and for others, I have to say, and uh, I'm naming no names. So that's really important, isn't it? God is giving us all these opportunities to grow in the fruit of the spirit. Are we gonna take them? So that's some of the challenges. There are also three initiatives where we are collaborating together, and I just want to highlight those quickly this morning. The first one is the uh, amazing response of Baptists Together to the Ukraine uh, crisis. We have really close relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Ukraine, and we have been devastated and heartbroken to see the impact, sorry, of the war on them and the whole of Ukraine. They are people I know how, I, well, we just, our hearts cry out for them. And the commitment to stand in solidarity with Ukraine in prayer and in practical ways has been outstanding. And this is because we love Jesus. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he welcomes the stranger. And I just want to say a huge thank you today to Steve Tinning, who is in the front. He's just like the star of the show today, isn't he? Yes. Steve, as our public issues enabler, is doing an incredible job of helping us as a movement, of connecting us as a movement so that all the potential and all the energy of our movement can be connected together and harnessed for the sake of the kingdom. And one of the things he's doing, uh, working really hard now, is on about matching those with rooms with those in need. So we just want to keep thanking you for that, your tireless work with our partners at BMS and the European Baptist Federation and with our fellow Baptist Chris at Sanctuary Foundation. It's just been amazing. You're going to hear more about that at the next session, um, but thank you, Steve. We really want to say thank you. We want to honour you, and I want to honour you as well in our churches for all that you are doing with uh, welcoming refugees, and that's not just Ukrainian refugees. I know some of you have got a real heritage of supporting refugees, and it is amazing. So thank you for all the ways that you are welcoming people and um, being involved in wider welcome initiatives for Ukrainians, Afghans and others at this time. It's amazing. So that's Ukraine. The second key initiative I want to talk about has uh, been mentioned by uh, my friend John here already, and that is linked to our, um, our commitment to invest in godly leaders. You know, we got together and we identified that there was uh, fun access to funding was a barrier for people training for ministry. And so do you know what? We got together and we worked out how to do something about it to bring about some change. And I'm delighted to say that we've launched a pilot scheme um, which will enable financial support for those training for ministry. So this is Tim here. Is Tim in the room or is he on his stand as we speak? He's probably on his stand, but oh no, he's there. Look, he's right at the back, back row. Stand up, Tim. There he is, Woo. this is Tim. Go and speak to Tim and find out more about that. And the final initiative, here she is, is this, well, she's not got a slide because she's here in person, the wonderful uh, Isabella Senior. This is, um, oh, well, there you go, yeah, they're gonna give it up. Come and eat here. So this is um, one of the things we're doing around our priority of investing in young adults. This is Isabella Senior, our new Young Leaders Development Coordinator. And it's such an amazing and key piece of work that we're doing. And so I'm not going to try and say it for her. I've given Isabella the chance for her elevator pitch. So here she goes. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. I came, I came to the UK from Brazil, actually, and I joined an internship program that was so formational for my understanding of God's plans for my life. And really, I would love to see other people having the same opportunity. So I'm currently connecting across Baptists together with interns, those who run internships or those who wish to run internships, to see young adults really grow as disciples of Jesus in character and in competence. Come find me if there's something that you'd like to talk more and develop. Thank you. Brilliant. So these are all fantastic examples of great collaborative working for the sake of the kingdom, I'm sure you'll agree. And just to echo again another one of John's points, please do remember that Isabella's role, Steve's role, in fact my own role, is made possible through your home mission giving. So thank you again for the money that you share. It enables us to keep in step with God's spirit and to be able to respond to what he's doing and to join with him in that mission. 
Now, there is so much more I can say, and I've already slightly gone over my time, but please, please, please do look at the annual review. The annual review has got so much stuff in it. It's so amazing. I get to read all the proofs of these things, but when I finally get the hard copy, I'm still really excited. I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. So if you've not got your copy at home, pick up a copy from one of the stands and just take the time to read and to be encouraged and inspired and to pray. That'll be very good. And above all, wherever you are and whatever you're doing right now, keep making room to listen to the Lord and be willing to follow him wherever he calls you. That's what we want to be as a movement, isn't it? Attuned to God and obediently following him where he calls. And keep being beacons of hope in the places that you find yourselves. Thank you. We're now coming to the time when we're going to honour our president, so we're going to have a bit of a change round. So thank you very much. And um, I'm going to welcome Jeff and Hayley now. So now we come to that moment when it's time to honour President Jeff for all the ways that he's offered leadership to us over the past year and to induct Vice President Hayley Young as president for the coming year. It's a significant moment in the life of our union and honouring the leadership that is exercised amongst us. Our president serves for one year as president and offers their gifts of leadership to kind of inspire us and help us to focus on our shared vision of growing healthy churches in relationship for God's um, mission. Our president is someone who offers spiritual wisdom and helps us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. They're also a symbol of our unity and alongside me as the general secretary, they represent us in many ways in public settings. In this past year, Jeff has served us so faithfully and invited us to draw near to the Lord with his theme, Attentive to Rhythms of Grace. And so, Jeff, we'd love to hear more about your uh, year, what's encouraged you and what's challenged you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to God for the privilege and uh, the pleasure of being president of the Baptist Union of Great Britain over this last year. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my theme of being attentive to rhythms of grace. There have been limitations. Uh, The continued global pandemic has meant that there have been some things that I haven't been able to do. Uh, Also, at the Baptist Assembly last year, I was prayed for, um, but the introduction to my theme had been recorded previously, as on the occasion of the assembly, I'd only just been discharged from hospital, having undergone stem cell transplant uh, to treat myeloma, uh, blood cancer. I have to say that at that point a year ago, uh, not feeling at my best, I wondered what the year would be like in reality. Someone posted uh, online a recovering president for a recovering year. And that's had a resonance uh, for me throughout this year. The reality has been uh, that I've had the opportunity to speak at ministers' conferences, association assemblies, colleges, churches, the Order for Baptist Ministry, to chaplains, and with BMS World Mission. Some of this has been on Zoom, and I may well have had a larger reach as a consequence, and some has been through traveling. The furthest north I've been to is Stocksfield in Northumbria, the furthest south, Pembury in Kent. I've had opportunities to write and also to record. My theme arose out of my own long-standing desire to be attentive to rhythms of grace in life and in ministry. 
And it's been important to pursue this for myself, even, even as I've shared it with others. While being attentive to rhythms of grace is relevant for all times and all places, it seems to have struck a chord particularly at this time in a period of unpredictability and uncertainty. As I've reflected on our life together in many different settings, a phrase that I've used that many have picked up on is moving together at the speed of love. One area that I hadn't intended to focus on has been vulnerability and weakness. On a number of occasions, I've spoken on this with the title, Surgical Stockings and Pull-Up Pants. <laughs> this arose out of emerging from the bathroom, a place I visited frequently uh, during my stem cell transplant and seeing in the mirror a thinned out version of myself wearing surgical stockings and pull-up pants. And it became a metaphor for what I was experiencing. And it became important to consider what being attentive to rhythms of grace meant for me in this condition, but also what it meant for us as Baptists together in the vulnerability and weakness that was being experienced through the pandemic. You will be pleased to know that I am no longer wearing surgical stockings and pull-up pants, but being attentive to rhythms of grace still speaks to me in my continued vulnerability, as it does to many of us within our movement. I'm delighted that Haley is to be the new president with her theme of building a bigger table. There is that sense that what she is bringing arises out of her own attentiveness to rhythms of grace. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity and for holding me throughout this year. I'm so grateful to all those who've prayed for me, really. I'm grateful to the Central Baptist Association and my friends and colleagues, Stephen and Colin in particular. But above all, I'm grateful to Kaz, because without Kaz, this last year would never have happened. As I come to a close, just one thing. Keep on watching for the Kingfisher. I just want to put into words, Jeff, our appreciation for what you've done. I think what you've just shared there has kind of uh, encapsulated something of your year. It's been amazing, your heart, to be attentive to the rhythm of God's grace and the wonderful authenticity, the way that you've modelled that for us. And you have demonstrated what it means to lead out of that vulnerability. And that's been really, really important. So we just thank you for all the ways that you've graciously and with your wisdom and insight just contributed in so many ways over us. So thank you for that. And again, just echo that thanks for Kaz and the family and to the Central Baptist Association for all the ways they've released and supported you. We have a gift for you. Um, thank you a small token of our appreciation, which we hope that you will enjoy and that you will enjoy Kaz as well, I hope. So that's good. But can we just pray mm. a blessing over you now? May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you even closer to him. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your soul. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
it's also a good opportunity to mention that um, I'm delighted to announce that the Reverend Tim Presswood has been elected as this year's Vice President, and we'll be hearing more from him in due course. But now it's the time to welcome our incoming president, the Reverend Hayley Young. Woo, yes, I think that's okay. Hayley is currently the Transitional Strategic Regional Minister for the Northern Baptist Association. And as Jeff has said, her focus for the coming year is building a bigger table. So Hayley, please do come and share about your presidential theme. Well, thank you so much. It's such an honour to be here and um, I've got some big shoes to follow with uh, Jeff, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. Um, and I just want to encourage us uh, to build a bigger table this year. And throughout the year, I'm going to be uh, visiting and sharing this message with churches and missional communities, basically anyone that will listen to me. Um, and I'm also going to be kind of sharing that journey on social media and vlogging my way through. So if you've all got your phones out, you can get your phones out. Okay. If you can just open the camera up and scan the QR code, that will take you to all of my social media accounts. Please do give me a like, follow, share, and subscribe. <clears throat> but also during uh, the year, I'm going to be doing some physical challenges, because why not? Just to raise some money for home mission and the profile to, to just give people the opportunity to flag up all the great stuff that is happening across our Baptist movement. And the first of these is the Yorkshire Three Peaks. That's walking 24 miles around 1,500 metres of ascent over 12 hours. And it seemed like a really good idea in the pub one night. <laughs> But you can, of course, sponsor me to raise money for home mission, but there are also spaces if you would like to join me on this challenge. 12 hours with me, what can be better? Um, so if you would like to join us for that, then please do uh, get in touch, but mostly please do pray for us. So let's get on to think about what we mean when we talk about a bigger table. Well, when we speak of it, I'd like us first to look at the incarnation of Jesus, who stepped into our humanity, our mess. Of course, he didn't have to do that. But the God we worship and serve doesn't stand at the sideline shouting at us. He emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. He came into our mess and our confusion, showing a radical hospitality to all people. Through Jesus' life, he modelled a different way, a different way of being and doing life. And even though at times he had some direct and challenging words to those around him, everyone still left his presence with their dignity intact. As Jesus' disciples, we should endeavour to follow this example, to cross the boundaries of division in order to listen, to learn, to hear, to know and to respect. This isn't always easy and sometimes it can be hard work and messy. But we have so much in common. Just do me a favour and look at the people you're sitting around next to. Just turn around and have a look. In what other circumstance would you ever be seen with these people? <laughs> I appreciate you may be sitting next to your spouse. <laughs> but there's an element where we may not have that much in common. But we do have Jesus. We have Jesus. We have a desire to embrace missional adventure, to transform our communities with the power and grace of Jesus Christ. We must keep listening, listening to our communities. I'm often reminded of the comment, the missionaries came to bring us the bread of life, but we choked on the packaging. Building a bigger table is about us not making that same mistake. 
It's about us starting from a place of listening, being contextual, and respecting Christ in everyone. Building a bigger table is about taking the time to listen and hear those who are not like us, who hold different views to us. I have to be honest, my experience as a millennial female in Baptist ministry means that daily I interact with people who don't believe I should have a voice. Every day, I meet with people who hold an interpretation of the Bible that means they don't believe I should exercise leadership and there shouldn't be space for me. But I'm still here. We, we are still here because because of our confidence in the gospel and our distinct Baptist DNA, DNA compels us to listen, to learn, to hear, to know and respect, even in difference. Paul writes, for though I am free with respect to all, I've made myself a servant to all, that I might win some more. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. So that to the outsider of the law, I became an outsider to the law, so I might win some. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I've become all things to all people, so that I may by some means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Can we, as a Baptist movement, build a bigger table for the sake of the gospel. I acknowledge this will be difficult at times, but I wholeheartedly believe it will bring blessing and joy. This is not about perfection. There's power in allowing yourself to be known and heard, in owning your unique story, your authentic voice, and there's grace in being willing to know and hear it in others. I accept that some of you may have switched off when I stood up here. I acknowledge that some of you may choose not to listen. I accept that you may not want to hear from me because of my age, gender, or perceived theology. But friends, even if you don't want to hear from me, I'd love to listen to you. Let's connect over this year and build a bigger table. Hayley, your gifts and spiritual leadership have been recognized amongst us and we are calling you to serve us as our president. As you share in the building up of the common life of Baptist together and the faith and mission that lie at the heart of our movement, will you commit yourself to serving as our president? Will you be diligent in service, faithful in offering inspiration and encouragement? And will you support and pray for us all and enable us to grow healthy churches in relationship for God's mission? I will, God's spirit empowering. Bless you. Um, we're going to be praying for Hayley now. So those who are going to pray, uh, is there some people coming up yeah, to pray? Yeah, yes, okay. come on up to pray. And uh, I think you'll need to use this you. microphone to pray. And then Jeff will close the prayer. Thank you, God, for Haley. Thank you for calling her into this role as Baptist Union president. Thank you, God, that you love her no matter where she is or what she has to face. You will be with her. Please help her make a difference and get more people to turn to you. We pray that she will stay close to you and listen to your voice. Help her build a bigger table where everyone is welcome and all voices are heard. Surround her with love and 
with kind and loving people. Give her wisdom and strength so that she can do all that you want her to do. Give her courage to face the unknown and help her when times seem rough. Watch over Haley, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Loving God, we thank you for the person that you have made Haley to be. We thank you for the way you've shaped her and the way that you will continue to shape her. In this coming year, as we think of her first and foremost as a disciple of Christ, we pray that she will grow in courage and in wisdom. We thank you for the vision of building a bigger table that you have given her. And as she seeks to share that message far and wide, we pray that she will grow as she shares. But we also pray that as a union, we would grow. Grow as we are challenged, as she pushes boundaries, as you challenge us to listen more deeply and to greater understand your mission. We pray that we would know more of what it means to experience life in all its fullness and to know freedom in Christ. We pray that people from all corners, margins of society, would know the church is a place of welcome through the message that Haley shares. We pray that you will continue to guide her and protect her during this coming year. She'd find that balance through ministering, ministering and serving you and also having time to be still in your presence, to maintain her connectedness to you as she seeks to pour out more of who you have placed in her through your presence of your Holy Spirit in others. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. Loving God, we thank you for all of Haley's experience of life and ministry which has contributed to the unique person that she is. We thank you for her varied gifts and her life in you. We thank you especially for granting her the eyes to see that we can together and by your spirit build a bigger table. We pray that your spirit will rest upon her, especially for this season and that you will to continue to give her the expectation and energy that you are present and active and have good things in store. Enable her, we pray, to be attentive to rhythms of grace and in all the circumstances in which she finds herself to hold on to you as you hold on to her. Bless her as she serves you with wise friends and times of rest and refreshing. And work through her, we pray, in ways that she does not expect, surprising her with your love for her and for all people. For we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>